من قناة المصري الحر أي حد المفروض ما يسرقهوش وانت اشترك واقف ليه بتتفرج يلا اشترك شايف كده I don't mind hunting a man down when he needs hunting. Kind of like it, in fact. I don't like this part of my job, though. Locking a man away from the land. Even if his name is Jim Larson. Nothing personal about it, huh? That's right. Nothing personal. But don't worry too much about it. Well, give me some time to think things over. What sort of things, for instance? Banks, for instance. They get you again? Yeah. You only got me this time because I was fool enough to work with a partner. By myself, you never even came close, and you know it. You want some advice? No. You've got five to ten years. Is that time to smarten up? Yeah. Maybe I can smarten up enough to figure a way to break up. There are a lot more permanent places, like graves. Must be a lot of other things a man like you can do. And do well. You live real good? Good enough. Better than this. Got a match? No. <laughs> Get away from the door. Jimmy, you're only making this for me. Give me the key. All right. Hurry it up. What are you seeing? Jim, what are you doing here? I came to help. I don't need your help. Can't you see that? Now get out of here. Go on, beat it. Jim, I got horses. All right, come on.
Can you make? Use a doctor, I guess. Yeah. Keep it covered. We're going back to riding trains, Danny. We can't do that. He wants to telegraph every railroad station in the state about us. Well, you're not going to make it far on horseback. I could try. Uh, well, you'd try anything, wouldn't you? We're brothers, Jim. Yeah. Well, that makes everything fine, doesn't it? If we get caught, you just tell everybody how we're brothers. I don't feel good. Don't you at me. J Jim, I'm sure sorry how this turned out. Don't feel sorry, kid. Don't ever feel sorry. It's like poison to a man. We'll try to make the freight car. Come on. Ah! Yeah, yeah. No, don't talk like that. It's not the worst bullet hole I've ever seen. I might have killed that deputy. Yeah, you just might have. If I did, I got you mixed up in a murder. You never were before, were you, Jim? In a murder? No. A couple of killings, yes. Ones that couldn't help. It was either me or him. None of them were lawmen. You should have stayed out of it. Gotten clean away, probably. Even if they'd caught you again, it'd still only be a jail sentence. A lot more trouble now than you were before. Yeah, you're in a little trouble yourself. Oh, it's my own fault. <sighs> Guess I haven't changed much. Still what you used to call me. Dumb punk kid. The color seemed brighter. Some dumb things you just got to do sometime, Jim. You know that. Nobody's got to do what you did. I didn't ask for your help. I never asked anything from anybody. You, Ma, old man, nobody. I never gave anything to anybody either. That's the way it's always been between me and everybody. some clothes, Jim. And some money. Not much. My pa's old suits. Never did get around to get rid of his clothes after he died. What a picture pretty good. Yeah. The old man's suit. You know, Danny, as long as I can think back, I can never remember Ma having a dress that cost more than three or four dollars. The suit must have cost the old man 50 bucks anyway. He always managed to have enough money for him. Point and hate and pa now. Uh, I learned a lot from the old man. 
How the world's put together. How to take it apart. How to reach out and grab what you want from it. Well, I didn't mind the way he was. No. Let him get her. Old and tired. Dead before her time. I never really knew before why you... Why you run off the day after she died. I used to ask Pa. He never would say. Now I know. I had me to take care of. That's all anybody's got. Except now I got you. I'm sorry, Jim. What did I tell you about being sorry? Now let me try to think a way out of this. Think out loud, Jim. Call me names if you want. It's a lot. It's a lot easier hearing you talking than being quiet. All right. Now we're heading due north this way. The track's dead end in a town called Tangle Blue. It's a pretty fair sized town. I've been through there. There are only three ways in or out of the town. One's the railroad, the other's this pass heading east. The only other way out is this pass going west. Now, about three miles before we get into Tangle Blue, we go through a, an old abandoned mining village. We drop off the train there and we'll hole up. And I'll sneak into town and try to get a doctor out to you. After we get you patched up, we'll get a hold of some horses and... You mind if I sit down here, little lady? No, I don't. Thank you. I'm going all the way home to Tangle Blue, alone. Well, that's quite a trip. Oh, I travel a great deal. I have ever since I was a child. Is that so? I'm 13, you know. Well, that's a nice age to be. Don't you think I look a little young for 13? No, not especially. Actually, I'm six and three quarters. You don't say. Yes, everyone thinks I'm a great deal older. 
I wish I was. Six is a very awkward age. And seven isn't much better. What's your name? Uh, Kincaid. Ray Kincaid. You know what, Mr. Kincaid? You need a shave. Yes, I know. You don't live in Tango Blue. Yeah, that's right. I know everybody there. And you don't work in the mines over Enterprise either, unless you're an inspector. Well, that uh, depends on what you mean by an inspector. My grandpa calls him Plastic Company Man. Your, uh, your Grandpa Bailey? Yes, he's the only grandpa I've got left. I've been visiting him and Grandma on Enterprise. He's retired now. Used to be a mine woman. Oh, sure. Now, let's see. What was his first name again? Joshua. Joshua Robert Bailey. That's right, Josh Bailey. Nice man, your grandpa. Even if he doesn't like us uh, company men. Do you know him? Oh, I think everybody in the mining business knows Josh Bailey. Al, you and Mal will stay by the cut and keep your eyes open. I'll get some grubbing bedrolls out to you before dark. George, you ride back with me. Hey, George. This way. Something else I want to look into first. Reed Williams, that fence had to be down by today. Williams won't take that fence down ever, and you know it. Well, looks like I'll have to do it for him. Mark, you're looking for a lot of trouble. Well, that's public land Williams is fenced in. That means anybody's entitled to use it, not just him. All right, come on.
Hello, sweetheart. It's good to see you. Hi, Mother. This is Mr. Kincaid from the Enterprise. Yo, Francis is still up. I knew there was something I forgot to do. Well, it'll just have to wait. For how long? I don't know. Five or ten years, maybe. <laughs> well, that France comes down today, one way or another. You just run along, Mark. Mr. Williams and me have got work to do. Now, beat it. For the last time, will you? I told you were busy. You're under arrest. I'll take a gun. You just try that, kid. No, no, you know better than that. Do what the sheriff said. Huh? Give him your gun. I'm surprised at you, Graham. You can't go around insulting officers of the law without being punished for it. Now, you run along to jail and don't make any more trouble. Tell the sheriff you're sorry. Well, now, I'm downright sorry, Sheriff. I, I reckon I just lost my head, that's all. <laughs> Kincaid, I remember. <laughs> well, what'll it be, Kincaid? I'll just take the whiskers off, Jake, and uh, leave a little blood inside me this time. <laughs> oh, I never cut a man yet, and you know it. <laughs> oh, come on now, Jake. You almost cut my chin off last October. You know, Jake, it's a sign of old age when your memory starts to rot like that. Yeah, my memory's just as good as ever. <laughs> last October, huh? Yeah. I remember Ben Caldwell and another fella came into my place just about closing time. That wasn't you, was it? Yeah, that was me, Jake. I thought so. <laughs> yeah, but it was Ben I cut, not you. And it wasn't my fault either. Oh, sure. Ben was so drunk he couldn't sit up straight. <laughs> That's right. Yes, I remember you and Ben all right. <laughs> you were having yourself a real time. That was all right as long as old Mason was sheriff. But since he died, they got Mark Riley under the badge. Oh, he's the young one, isn't he? Yeah, he's just a kid. Filling out old Mason's term. But he didn't ask for the job. The people put it on him. All he wants to do is just study his law books, and that's what he goes by. 
Same as most folks go by the Bible. He uh, stopped the train about three miles out of town. Do you uh, know what he's looking for? Oh, some fellow on his way to prison. A friend of his got on and they pulled an escape at Porter. Killed a deputy. <coughs> Killed him, huh? That's what came over the telegraph. There's a real manhunt going on all over the area. We'll have the real Lord posters here tomorrow morning. Posters? Yep. And there's some coming over about a fellow called Larson. Be on tomorrow's train. We'll have his face all over town. I'm going to put one up myself. Right here. Yes, sir. How do you? I want to buy a horse. Well, I guess several for sale. Depending how far you want to ride and how hard. Well, I need a good one. Uh-huh. How much for the bay here? Well, I've, I've got some that are cheaper. What's the matter? Don't you want to sell this one? Well, I... I don't know. I sort of... I sort of grown to like him. How much do you want for her, including the tack? Uh, Forty-five dollars, sir, including everything. Now, that's a little steep on me right now. How much for the sorrel here? Uh, Twenty-five dollars. All right, I'll take him. Uh, now, why... Why don't you take the bay here? You, you can owe me the difference. Well, why would you want to do that? Because you... You look at a horse fine. And, uh, well, I think you'll be kind to him. Wait a minute, I'll get the gear. I understand the sheriff is offering five dollars a day for extra deputies to... We have to look for those uh, two killers. You know, you might get yourself a week's work. Don't worry, I'll see that you get the rest of your money. And thanks for letting me on to you. There you are. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Kincaid. What can I do for you? Well, hello, Miss Bailey. Your little girl didn't tell me you had a store. <laughs> I don't. I only work here. Oh? I'm a widow. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Now, can I help you? Yes, I need some clothes. <laughs> well, we don't carry anything as nice as the suit you're wearing. No, you need some work clothes. Oh. I'll need a jacket. The shirt and uh, these trousers ought to do. Well, this looks like it might fit. You can try them on in there if you like. Oh, thanks. Ellen, you've got to tell your brother to stop being such a fool about that fence of mine. He's only trying to do his job. That fence protects my land. It's been my land for more than 20 years. But the law says that the land the belongs... The law's wrong. That's not for you to decide. I've decided just the same. Nobody's going to take my land away from me, Ellen. I'll kill the man who tries. You'd kill Mark? If I have to. I like Mark. I don't want to see him dead. Will you talk to him? He won't listen to me. That's it, then. Reed, please. There's nothing more to be said. I'm sorry. Well, these will do fine. How much for the clothes? Five dollars. Now, I'll need a gun. Help yourself. They scare me. I guess they scare everybody a little. That's uh, part of the general idea. Now, how much for the uh, gun and the belt? Eighteen dollars. Mm -hmm. Need some shells, but uh, give me a couple of boxes. It's a dollar and a half each. Uh, what does that come to all together? Um, Twenty-six dollars. Twenty-six. Thank you. You look different. Bigger. Yeah, maybe it's the gun. They make anybody look bigger. Perhaps that's it. I don't care much for guns myself, Miss Bailey. Not many men do, but uh, now they're kind of necessary. Why? Why? Yes, why are they necessary? Well, I, uh, I'm going to be traveling for the next few weeks, and uh, well, I'll need a gun for food. 
Whatever I eat, I'm going to have to shoot. You're going away? Yes. I'll give my regards to your daughter, Mr. Bailey. I envy you. I wish I could go away. I will, too. Someday. Goodbye. Mister, but we got orders not to let anyone we don't know go through the pass. Oh, no, don't tell me that. What's happened? Oh, there's supposed to be a couple of escaped killers loose in the area. Well, what do you know? <laughs> you know something? It's taken me 10 years to get up enough nerve to quit my miserable job. I was going to head out to Sonora in the gold country. I would have to pick today. <laughs> what kind of job are you walking away from? Oh, I'm an inspector over at uh, Enterprise. Name's Kincaid. Don't sound like such a terrible job to me. No job, not so bad. It's... Uh, just dull, that's all. You know, a man gets kind of tired of being called a blasted company man all the time. <laughs> How long do you think it'll be before I can get through? Oh, and those posters get in on the train in the morning, and we'll know for sure who to let through and who not to let through. Yeah. Well, by that time, I'll we'll probably change my mind again. You know, you get to thinking about those three square meals a day and that paycheck every month. <laughs> makes a man kind of soft. Let's let him through. First company man I ever met talked like a human being. Um, ah, we better not. If Mark hears about it, we'll be looking for jobs two minutes later. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry, Kincaid. Uh, another 24 hours ain't so much, and Sonora will still be there. Keep your nerve up. I'll try. So long. <laughs> Like some coffee? No, thanks. Kincaid. Uh, what can I do for you? The stable man tells me you could use a spare deputy. Uh, deputy Allison? Mr. Kincaid. Oh, yeah, we met on the train this morning. Planning to stay in town for a while? No, not for long. I see you bought the bay from old Jackson. Yeah. A mighty good trail horse. For a man who needs one. Yeah, I rode him out of way this morning. He's all right. Well, what makes you want to be a deputy? I could use the money. There, um, wouldn't be anything personal about it, would there? I mean, like you, uh, knew the deputy who was killed at Porter? No, there's nothing personal about it. Jake just told me he was dead, that's all I know. Jake? The barber. The truth of the matter is, Sheriff, I'm just about broke. A horse and a new gun. Hard on the bankroll. Yeah. As Allison here can tell you, I've been working for the Enterprise Company, and I decided I'd had my fill of that, so I was starting out for Sonora today. But you've got the pass closed, and, well, I just thought while I was waiting around, maybe I could make myself useful and earn a little eating money at the same time. Well, I didn't mean to needle you, Kincaid, but I don't like my men to have personal reasons about things like this. I mean, a job's done because the law says it has to be done. Oh, hello. Hello, Kincaid. You getting anywhere? Well, it's hard to tell. <laughs> you two know each other? Well, just a short acquaintance. We met out in the past when I thought I was heading for Sonora. Well, Sheriff, can you use me? I won't know till tonight. Well, I'll check with you then. Now, there's a dance at the town hall. I have to be there. You expecting trouble? Well, only for my girl if I don't take her. <laughs> I'll see my other deputies there, find out if they'll be working. Why don't you drop by? Well, maybe I'll go dancing then. See you tonight, Sheriff. Fine. Did he give you any trouble at the pass? Nah. 
Said he finally got up gumption enough to leave Enterprise. He wanted to ride out before he lost his nerve. I felt kind of sorry for him. He doesn't look much like a man you have to feel sorry for. Hi, Mr. Kincaid. Oh, hello, Alice. Nice to see you again. I almost didn't recognize you in those clothes. Well, I'm glad you did. It's a mighty pretty dress you're wearing. Thank you. Murder made it. <laughs> oh, evening, Miss Bailey. Good evening. Don't you look pretty, Mr. Kincaid? I mean, doesn't she look pretty? She certainly does. Your dad is him, won't you? Run along, Alice, and find the other children. Oh, Mother. Go on now, Alice. Will I see you later? I hope so, Alice. I, uh, imagined you'd be out in the hills somewhere by now, shooting your supper. I, uh, changed my mind for a while. I didn't think I was going to see you again, either. I don't usually come to these dances, but my brother insisted. Well, he just wants you to have a good time. I suppose that's part of it, but I really think he'd like it if I met another man and became interested in him. He worries about me. Well, that's natural enough. I took care of him when he was little. Now that he's grown up, he thinks he has to look after me. But he doesn't. Nobody does. I had a kid brother once who thought he had to look after me. Had? Yeah, he died a while back. I didn't mean to keep you. Perhaps you'd like to join your friends from Enterprise. From Enterprise? Well, you're not keeping me at all, Mrs. Bailey. As a matter of fact, I was just about to ask you to dance. Well, thank you. And it's Ellen. All right. And I'm Ray. Enjoying yourself, Kincaid? Oh, fine, Jake. Why didn't you leave today, Ray? Oh, I just couldn't seem to get started. I've heard men say the first part of the journey is often the hardest. Yeah, I guess it is. Why is that? Well, I don't know, different reasons. Is it ever because you're afraid to start out from one place to another? To try to change something, even if it's bad? That could be it. In the store today. You said you envied me, right? Going away, I know. This doesn't seem to be such a bad place. It is for me. Too many memories. Maybe. Too much trouble. Well, there's always trouble everywhere. For some. For you. I've had my share. Well, there's your brother over there. I came here to talk to him. You didn't tell me you knew Mark. I just didn't get around to it, yes. Oh, I see you're playing politics, Kincaid. But I'm not going to be influenced because you're dancing with my sister. Now, Janet, Mr. Kincaid, Miss Hawthorne. Miss Hawthorne, any word for me, Sheriff? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I won't need you, Kincaid. I was counting on it. What were you counting on, Ray? No, oh, I'm picking up a few extra dollars as deputy. Seems he used all his cash buying a horse and a gun. Well, something else will come up. Thanks for the dance, Mrs. Bailey. Riley. Somebody outside wants to see you. I'll be in my office at 6 in the morning. Someone wants to see you right now. Are you coming out or you want him coming in? Intrude on your fun, Mark. I know you don't get time for much of it. I managed to keep busy. You didn't happen to busy yourself around my land this afternoon, did you? That's not your land. You're mistaken, Sheriff. It's been my land for 20 years, and it's going to stay my land. Now that's public grazing ground. 
Nobody has a right to put a fence around it. Nobody has a right to cut the fence I put around it. I do, because I wear this badge. And as long as I'm sheriff, I'm going to do it the way the law is laid out. That fence will be up again at 9 tomorrow morning. I mean to have it stay that way. The law says that land belongs to everyone. It's not yours to take from them. If it were, I'd fight for you. If that fence is cut again, I'm holding you personally responsible. I guess you'll have to, because I'm the one who has to cut it again. Riley, if I have to kill you, I don't much care whether it's tomorrow or now. You can save us both time by starting the trouble now. I have no cause for trouble until that fence is up again. And I'm telling you, it'll be up tomorrow. And whatever happens will happen tomorrow. Good night. Riley. A man insults me when he turns his back and walks away. We're not waiting for tomorrow, you and me. The sheriff said tomorrow, Williams. dance going on in there. A lot of people enjoying themselves, having fun. You wouldn't want to spoil it for them, would you? Mister, you're butting in on something that doesn't concern you. Either you're extra good with that gun, or you're bluffing. All you got to do is figure out which it is. You're pretty worked up now, Reed. Why don't you go home and think this thing out? You can't win no matter what you do to me. No man is important enough to walk wherever he wants. He's bound to run into something that'll stop him. Why don't you get along now, Williams? If that fence is cut again, Riley, I swear I'll kill you. And if you're still eager to back him up, mister, you'll be more than welcome. Mark, Reed meant what he said. A man can't take what they want with guns anymore. Reed knows it, too. You're wrong, Mark. You're wrong. I know you believe what you're saying, but it isn't true. Janet, you know how I feel. Men can take what they want with guns. Men like Reed Williams. You can't stop him. Well, I can try. And you can die trying. Is that what you want? Mr. Kincaid, please tell him. I don't know what to say. Except you got more than just yourself to think about. I know that. I didn't ask for any of this. What's the use of having anyone? Try to belong in the mine caves in or a gun goes off. What's the use? I'm going home. She doesn't understand. She doesn't even try to. And neither do you. She loves you. I love you. But neither of us can understand is why that doesn't mean something to you. Johnny, let's go back to the dance. No, just, just take me home, please. Please. All right. Well, Kincaid, I owe you something. If you still want that job, be at my office at 6 in the morning. I'll be there. Thanks. I thought I might see that you get there, if you don't mind. That's very nice of you. Did you and Mother dance together? Yeah, for a while. had a busy day. Haven't we all? 
That was quite a thing you did, Ray. And I want to thank you. Why did you do it? Oh, for obvious reasons. I wanted that deputy job. I got it. The other reasons? No, not really. I don't believe you. Where should I lie? I don't know. But you are lying. No man would risk his life just to get a $5 a day job. You're good, Ray. With a gun? Enough? No, I didn't mean that. I mean you're a good man. I don't know why you try to hide it. Well, let's not talk about me if you don't mind. All right. Evening, Ellen. Is that Mark with you? No. What's wrong? Nothing you'd want to see, Ellen. Where's Mark? He's still at the dance, as far as I know. Sam, why you didn't get Mark, will you? Somebody hurt over there? Worse than that. Mike keeps us walking along the bank and seeing this bundle bobbing along and fished it out. Bundle? Yeah, a mail sack. Only there wasn't no letters in it. The canvas must have held some air inside, so it floated. Don't you wonder? Nice looking boy like that. Somebody stuffing him into a mail sack. Let's go, Ray. You know, I, I can't help thinking. He was just a boy. Like Mark. Yeah. Just a boy. Would you like some coffee, Ray? I could do something a little stronger if you have it. I hate to wake it. Better take over from here. I'll go put up your horse. I didn't expect you to. I'll 
I'll get you a drink. No, never mind. I've got to be going. You're afraid of something, aren't you? Everybody is. I mean, of getting involved. Is that what's worrying you? Maybe. Don't let it bother you. It wouldn't do either of us any good, Ellen. Believe me. Good night. Give me a bottle. <laughs> Your gun, mister? My gun? Why? We got a new sheriff in town. So, we got a new set of rules. Hello to your friend, Mr. Williams. I didn't even hear him. He must have tiptoed in. Well, he looks like a very quiet man, Mr. Williams. Most of the time. <laughs> they say that's the kind to look out for. Well, you think he forgot how to talk? Oh, no, no, Bert. He's, uh, he's just a quiet type. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's one of the quietest men I've ever seen. You can almost hear him being quiet. You know something, he wasn't so quiet at that dance. Maybe he's just quiet in saloons. Is that right, mister? Well, maybe he's just quiet when he's not wearing his gun. Yeah. Williams, why don't you put your monkeys back in their cages? Mister, I think you made a mistake coming to this town. You made a mistake at the dance, and you made your biggest mistake coming in here. I didn't come here to get rousted by you and your men. I came in here to get a drink. Maybe I'll have to have one with you. Don't you touch my whiskey unless I invite you. You just invited yourself a lot of trouble, quiet man. This town's sure no place for you now, mister.
Okay. Hello, Sheriff. I'm trying to get an identification on a body that was found in the river. Maybe you know him. No, I saw him earlier when I was taking your sister home. I didn't know him. Just about my age. Dead. I smoke? No, oh, thanks. Mark, why don't you let Williams have his fence? It's nice of you to see Ellen home. Ray, you back me against Williams. Was that just to get the job? I thought it was. You ever married, Kincaid? No. I never knew a woman I felt that way about. I do. And you could have fooled me. What do you mean? I thought you were the kind of man that if... Well, if you felt that way about a girl, you'd marry her. Would you? Sure I would. Even though you might make a widow out of her any day? Tomorrow, for instance? Look, kid, I'm no expert when it comes to women. I saw that girl's face when she looked at you. She'll marry you or she'll never marry anybody. Are you trying to tell me I should ask her to marry me now? Tonight? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't you realize I might be killed in the morning? Anybody can be killed. Any day. Anybody is me. Any day is tomorrow. If it isn't Williams, it could be somebody else. The posters on this man you're looking for are coming in on the train in the morning. He might be right here in town. He might have to kill you if he wants to stay alive. Now, Williams is the only one I'm worried about. Well, if it isn't Williams, it could be the other fella. It could be a poisonous snake. What you've got to do is make up your mind to do something and then go do it. No matter what the situation is. I couldn't ask him. All right, then don't. Do you really think it's right, Ray? I'm sure of it, kid. Come with me. No, you don't need to. I need a best man. Go get somebody else, one of your friends. No, please. And before God and this company, I now pronounce you man and wife. Are you supposed to kiss me now? I know. Congratulations. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, Jeff. Mark, I I'm so glad. <laughs> me too, sis. I know. No tears. Jenny? Goodbye, Ray. Good night.
Oh, uh, uh, Mark, that body that came down the river last night, nobody's been able to identify it. And it don't look like nobody will either. And you and Mel better bury him. Right. Oh, and Mark, you better take it easy today. I, uh, I never did thank you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be married. As long as you're thanking me and not blaming me, you're welcome. Congratulations. Well, it's a strange and wonderful thing, having a wife. I hope I live long enough to have a family. You could be sure of that if you'd hang up that gun and quit playing sheriff. Well, this is my job right now, and I'll wear this gun until it's over. The way things are going, I doubt if you're going to make it, but if you live through the next few weeks without somebody shooting your head off, you're going to be a lawyer. You might even be trying to free some man you put in jail the week before. Innocent or guilty, I want a man to have a chance. What if these two men you're looking for came through here right now? What kind of justice would they get? A fair trial, a better chance than they've given others. They've got to make their own chance, any way they can get at it. Nobody can take us by surprise coming through here. Nothing's a surprise if it comes from where you're looking. A good man with a gun could shoot his way through here. Be free as a bird. A man like that can never be free, right? You may understand some people. But you don't understand them all. What if I told you these two men you're looking for were split up someplace along the line? And I was one of them. I'd say it didn't fit. You could have just about anything you wanted without stealing it. You don't say. I know what you're up to, Ray. You're trying to take my mind off my other problem, that fence. But it won't work. Do you know how to use a gun? Well, I wouldn't wear it if I didn't. I don't mean on buzzers and rattlesnakes. I mean on a man. Have you ever shot a man? No. You're going to have to now. Well, that's up to Reed Williams. I know men like Williams. And I'm telling you, he's not bluffing. You cut that fence and he'll gun you. Maybe right then, maybe on the road back to town. Maybe tonight or tomorrow or next week, but he'll do it. That leaves you only one way out. Now, don't tell me again to leave that fence alone. I won't. You're too stubborn for that. But I'll give you some good advice. Don't let William set the time and the place. You go after him. Hunt him down and force him to it. But get him, and get him first. Don't wait around for a fair fight. Just get him any way you can. I couldn't do that. That's the only way you've got to pray. If you have to cut that fence, go all the way. I have to cut it, and you know it. Yeah, I know it. Dumb punk kid. Fix it. Forget it.
Forget it. Purdy's doing it. Stay out of this, Purdy. This is something between Reed Williams and me. I work for Reed. And his business is my business. Besides, I just spent a lot of time fixing this. Sorry. Hold it, Riley. Now, I got no big yen to kill you. But I will, so help me. You take one step more and this thing's going off. You put that gun away, Purdy. Sounded like it came from the fence, Reed.
Better go up there. He's the man we're after, all right. He's Lars. You might say he's the same man, and again, you might not. Get him into the buggy and be careful with him. 